is a long one. Oh, my Nothing God. but net. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of All Nat, brought to you by OTS. I'm your host, Natalie, but most people call me Nat. And today, Warriors Twitter, I have a legend with me, Andy Lou from Light Years. I'm sure as you all know, um, the person who created the term Steph Better. <laughs> um, <laughs> someone who used to terrorize the TL in a way that I enjoyed, but really used to drive others crazy. So Andy, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'm so happy to have you on today. Oh, thank you for having me on. I think uh, it's good to see more people uh, talk Warriors. I always feel like there's not you know, there's not there. It's always the same people that talk the warriors in terms of media. I don't consider myself media. So it's nice to see different people uh, talk media, especially people of color, women. So it's always nice uh, versus the same old faces. Uh, so it's cool. It's cool. Oh, I appreciate that coming from you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm definitely not media. I'm just a psycho <laughs> fan. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's even better, honestly. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, did you just finish watching the Celtics game and 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 Nets? Because that's what I was watching before it's we just started. <laughs> be- beautiful, absolutely beautiful basketball. I I, I think that game is kind of like the epitome of um, kind of one team that's kind of does it like the Warriors. Like you've got one team that's kind of like similar to the Warriors, where they've got a lot of players that they drafted and grew up together, and then you got the other team that's kind of your standard, uh, your super team, right? And so it's kind of. It's cool. And, you know, as, as Warriors fans, I, I don't know about you, but it's cool to see, you know, kind of KD get a, get what, you know, he wanted this, right? Yeah. He, he wanted this. He wanted Brooklyn. He wanted that scenario. Yeah. And um, that, that's what happened. Listen, that's- I'm enjoying it and I don't, I am not afraid to say it. I love it. I'm glad. I mean, I personally initially wanted us to play the Nets so we could just beat them. Right. But they couldn't handle their business. I will take them getting swept in the first round. Ooh. That's equally as enjoyable. <laughs> well, that well, that's that's even worse. Like if they had lost in six or seven, you're kind of sitting here and you're like, oh, you know, okay, maybe they those guys played well. Um, they but they got swept. Like swept. You, you can't. I mean, even LeBron, I guess LeBron got swept right one time in the finals by the Warriors, right? But like, I mean, has Steph even ever lost a series in five? Right, no, like it's six like games, it's, no less than right. six games. It's just what? it's not like KD is by himself. <laughs> He's got some good players next to him. It's not just him. So, I it, it's oh, frankly it's a little embarrassing. Uh, very. <laughs> it's very embarrassing. So very, uh, very, yeah. and um, yeah, I it's crazy because I hopped right on to talk to you because normally you know I'd be firing off tweets on yeah. the TL, yeah. but I'm still gonna get them off. Yeah, um, got all night. Yeah. The Celtics clearly understood the assignment that the Warriors did not. So (laughs) let's talk about our dubs, Andy. So what happened the other night, right? Why didn't they close it out? What did you see? Yeah, for me, I think this team, that small lineup is is amazing. I love it. I I do think defensively there's going to be a problem with with that small lineup. I think when you play three guards like that – like those defensive mistakes were were it was Steph Clay and Poole just haven't played minutes together. They just they just haven't, and you saw them make mistakes defensively. I don't think it was like it's not like they were getting isolated on. It's not like Steph was right. too small. Like it's just they're just leaving guys open. But the problem with that is like we saw that in the regular season a little bit. So you know, at end of the day, Denver made a ton of shots, but they also got a lot of wide open shots. So they defensively, did. I'm sitting there like. Can, can they can they get it together defensively especially not leaving guys wide open in the corner if they can they'll be fine because offensively they're just they're monstrous they're amazing I mean I think the clay getting into foul trouble early also really threw things off a lot um what team would like because I mean I I think I mean I'm not looking ahead really but I, I think they're going to close it out at home in five I think they'll they'll take care of business and so assuming they do what team concerns you that you think like that small lineup would be an issue? Cause I actually think we pose like a matchup issue for the Suns, right? So I don't yes. like people are so concerned about us and you know, Aiden and and we don't have right. an interior presence, but I think we're a matchup problem for the Suns. Um, even with Booker there. Right. I, I agree. Um 
I think it's Giannis, probably the only guy. But, like, is Giannis even going to get to the finals? Now Giannis is going to have to play this Boston team that without Chris Middleton, right? So Denver has this unique, like, mismatch with Jokic where he's a he's a true big that, that the Warriors can't. Because with Aiton and, and Jaron Jackson, like, those guys are big, but they're not – like, you know, they're not they're not putting you under the hoop like the way Jokic is, and they're not forcing you to double. Like, cool, Jaron Jackson, you want to post up? Great. DeAndre Ayton, great. We'll let you do that all day. So I think it is kind of unique to Denver. Um, I guess the only team looking forward that I think the Warriors will have this problem defensively with that lineup where I think, like, they just might not be able to guard him is probably Giannis. Like, that is probably the only guy I feel like yeah, he might just run this team over the way that Jokic is kind of doing right now. And and while Jokic has only Monte Morris next to him, like Chris Middleton is all right, right? Drew, Drew Holiday is okay. That's probably the only guy. I, now I'm looking ahead to the NBA Finals, right? That's kind of kind of crazy. But I right. don't really see those mismatches as much with Memphis and, and Phoenix. If so Phoenix know, makes way, it. The way that I think about the Bucks, because I always hear people like, well, what are you going to do with Giannis? And I'm just like, well... What are you going to do with Steph? I mean, the way that I see it is like, you just take away Giannis's guys. And I'm not saying like that's totally easy, but like Giannis himself alone cannot beat you. Like it, like he can't. Um, And I don't think like, so Chris Middleton is good. He's Mm -hmm. a very good player, but he still has like his question marks, if you ask me, in my opinion, mm-hmm. in terms of like what he can mm-hmm. do. And I still think like, I think they're the kinds of players that you can't always trust them to be good on the road. You know, even mm-hmm. though they're not role mm-hmm. players, they're the like stars of the team, him and Drew yep. along, like, you know, they're Giannis's co-stars, but I still don't trust them to necessarily play great consistently on the road. Um, and then Drew, I mean, if they're putting Drew on staff, I mean, I'm sure at times, I don't know if he's going to be the only person, but -hmm. like trying to chase around Steph all game, like that's going to tire him out. But I think the Bucks need Drew to be effective offensively. Like he can't just be like a defensive player for them. He's he's, he's on and off all the time. Right. right? And then now you add to that, like probably the toughest person he would have to guard, like in any series. And I just, I don't know. I like, I don't think it would be easy, but I like, I see where like, while our our size could hurt us, like we still have some advantages that we can exploit against them. I'm with you. That's that's just how the NBA is now, too. It's just it's just I saw Brooklyn ended the game today with four guards. Four, I mean Bruce Brown's a guard, four guards and Kevin Durant. That's how they ended the right. game. And and they I mean they lost not because like they couldn't rebound. They lost because that those guys just don't know how to play defense. Like it's just and they don't know how to play de- get defense together. So you would think Clay's gonna get better too. Wiggins has been very good defensively. Like he's our defensive stopper because I think Clay's kind of your guy where he, he's he's I mean, we may have to wait till next year, like right. t- till he's till he's yeah. back defensively and then pull pull and Steph. Well, I shouldn't say Poole and Steph. I should say Steph is good defensively and Poole kind of loses his mind a little bit because he's 22 years old. Um, but I, I think defensively, I mean, you're right. It's just, I don't know if there's a team out there that punishes him like that. And then Chris, again, Chris Chris is also coming off an MCL. Like he's going through the same injury that Steph is going through. Like we just, like we don't know. And then Boston, And then Boston's got their own small lineup. So there's no... There's no lineup out there that you're going to say they're going to crush that small lineup. So I'm with you. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's what can this team do to offensively um, that that can end that offense. I think they've got the best offense in the NBA. Like that that five. Best I agree. Like healthy, definitely. And we just yeah. didn't get to see them intact for most of the year. So our rating for the season wouldn't reflect it. Nope, but nope, nope. so I want to talk some more about the teams in the East, but let's come back to the West nope. for a second. So Minnesota and the Grizzlies. Like, have you been paying attention to that series? Have you been watching it? Because <sighs> going yeah. in, I feel like everyone was picking the Grizzlies. And I picked the Grizzlies in seven, but I was like, this oh, wow. is honestly a pick 'em series to me. Like, I don't wow. I don't know why everyone thinks like the Grizzlies are just gonna go in there and dominate the Wolves just based on like the 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 matchup. Like the the Wolves have the athleticism, they have the length. To me, the talent level is comparable on both teams. So I just thought it was going to be a close matchup. 
their games during the season were close. So I just thought it was like a pick them. And I was giving the edge really to Memphis because they have home court and yep. I think a better coach. But honestly, the Wolves have really played, been the better team throughout this series. Like they should be up 3 1. They just yep. had an epic collapse. And so, like, the, the, the Grizzlies keep falling into deficits, 26, 20 plus, 15. Like, Ja has just, I mean, he's had, I think, maybe one total good game in this series. He keeps getting attacked. Yep. Um, and yep. but what's happening to Ja is what people think happens to Steph when he gets mm -hmm. attacked, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just been abysmal on defense. So, I am not certain like who's actually coming out of that series so i'm curious to know what you think in terms of what you think about it but also what you think the matchup would look like if we went against either one of those teams because i really don't know who it's gonna be i so you're you're smarter than you're smarter than a lot of people who called this as a memphis and kind of five or six and I, I was similar i was like if i had to pick i'll probably pick memphis five or six right but also on the, on the one side I, I kept saying memphis is they're a young team they are a young basketball team. And I, and I, you know, we all think that they're going to be a championship contender, but you don't get to skip steps, right? Like we watched Memphis last season and they beat the Warriors in that playing game and, and jaw was amazing. Then they beat Utah in game. They lost four in a row after that. Like you don't like if you, if Memphis had won and beat Utah last season, then they lost in the second round. Then I'd be like, okay, cool. Like they're, they're right. winning the series. They, they've won before right. they've gone through some heartbreak. They'll know how to win. They haven't done that and yeah. and it just this this always happens no matter what to everyone you remember the warriors right everybody listening like they know they went through the spurs and then chris paul and the clippers like those were tough series that the warriors lost then they broke through and won the championship so memphis i think they're they're a step away this series has been weird because i people have been saying that jaw's been playing poorly and they've kind of said like oh he'll be fine he'll be fine but in my head i'm like well there's a reason why he's playing poorly. Like they're, they're not guarding him. Like they're, they're essentially throwing a wall up against him and saying, Hey, we're just not going to let you go to the basket yep. and draw fouls. And you're going to have to figure out either how to make threes or shoot a mid race jump shot. Or, I mean, what he's doing right now, he's finding open players, which he is. So that that's good. But for them to be at their best, he has to average 24, 25, 26 points, which he's not doing. So I, you know, maybe that's a sustainable problem moving forward on Minnesota side for me. Uh, they're similar to Memphis. They're just, they're young, like they're yeah. young and I'm watching and I'm like, sometimes I'm like uh, Anthony Edwards. He, sometimes he just doesn't touch the ball for five minutes and they don't have a point guard that can get him in the ball. Same with Anthony Towns, who I really like, but he seems to like either be super soft or overcompensates and becomes too aggressive. And then he starts fouling everyone. Um, it's a little odd though. I like him. So that's, that's a team that I think like if D'Lo was, you know, you know, I, I hate Chris Paul, but like if D'Lo was like a mini Chris Paul, like I think that team, that team is, is a lot better. Right. But D'Lo right. is more of a scoring guard. So I can't tell you who's going to win. I'm with you. They should probably be up three, one. It still feels like Memphis is still going to win. But I think if you're a Warriors fan, regardless of who you play, is it not, is it not like the fact that you've got Minnesota who's pushing this Memphis team to the limits? Like it bodes well for the Warriors and it bodes well for that small lineup. I think that's the most important thing. It bodes well for that small lineup where you just, you don't think that they're really going to punish you that hard um, right. uh, with that small lineup. Cause it just, it does, it feels like you can do playoff schemes against jaw and take away a lot of what he could do. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think for me, I think the reason why I thought it was going to be a long series, aside from some of the stuff I said earlier, is just I always wonder what Ja was going to look like once playoff defenses like started yep. to key in on him. And then also the Grizzlies just get a lot of their their a lot of their scoring comes in transition. And so I was like, I don't really think that they're a great half court team. I don't think when Ja does get double that he handles them that well you know I just knew that like if his ability to get to the room was taken away um mm -hmm. I wanted to see how he would handle it and I don't think he has figured that out or he's trying to figure it out he's in trying this series. to yeah. Yeah. and so um 
yeah, that's that that's that's why I thought it might be like challenging and it would it would go somewhat long. I also unlike a lot of people, I I still think Carl Anthony Towns is probably the best player in this series. I'm with you. I'm with <laughs> I'm I agree. I, we well, we may be the only ones though. We we might be the only ones, but now he hasn't played like it all four games, right? He's had like now I think two good games, one really bad one. And I don't know, another, like he was in foul trouble for like another. Right. So no one's really played great. Like Aunt Davis kind of, I mean, not Anthony Davis, Aunt Edwards kind of was talked about the most after game one, but like Cat had a big game that game. And then he was really good in the last game that they won. Um, so he hasn't like been like the best player every night on the court, but I just think talent for talent I still think he's the best player in the series and I don't and I don't think there's actually a really large gap between Anthony Edwards and Ja so I felt like Mm -hmm. like I felt like I felt like Ja might be the either the first or second best player in the series but then after that I thought that the Wolves had like the second and maybe third I mean I guess it depends like some people might feel like it's Jaron Jackson or whatever but I just I thought their talent level was pretty equal and I was like, you know, everyone kept saying, oh, oh, you know, like the Wolves, they don't have any experience. I'm like, well, they have the same exact experience as Memphis. I said, <laughs> they want to play in game, right? Both teams want to play in game. And I said, Cat has been to the postseason. He's been in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. D'Angelo has been in the playoffs. They just haven't done it together. But they, they've they all had like an experience, like a, a first round. So it, it's interesting to watch. I have no clue who we're going to play. Like part of me still want the Grizzlies because I want the Warriors to shut them up. But, um, yep. Yep. Uh, but, um, I, I, you know, it would be funny too to just laugh at them if they didn't make it out the first round after I, all the clock. And the humbling comes for everyone is what I always say. <laughs> now, now, now I think there's one, you know, when you hit on this a little bit earlier, playoff defense, there's never been a bigger gap, I think, between playoff basketball versus regular season basketball. Is, is what we're seeing now. I mean, just like literally just watch Draymond, right? It's like the dude, the dude looked fucking terrible a month ago. And now he's freaking all world defensive player of the last generation of the last 10 years. It's ridiculous to see. Um, and I think we're seeing that a little bit with this Memphis team. Um, four games in, but I, I have a kind of theory where it's just Memphis. I have a theory about this with Phoenix, especially, is that they're like the peak Spurs where they are incredible. Just day in, Day out against every single team, 82 games, they will win 65 every single time because their floor is so high. It's it's just they're going to be very good every single night. But in the postseason, when you talk about kind of how high the ceiling is, I don't know if Phoenix is is that high. And I think with Memphis, like a lot of their success is they just have like 10 great like role players. They just – all of them are good. Like the Warriors, they just don't have that many – like it's hard. Like the Anthony Mountain and 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 Tyus Jones and uh, Zaire Williams and all these Brandon Clark, all these guys are just drafting. They're just like they throw them on the court. And they're just awesome at all times. Right. The Warriors are kind of they're just an older team, and you kind love JTA, love Damian Lee, love Beal. Yeah, Beal, so maybe not. But like <laughs> these guys, where you're just like they might not be as good. But when you're talking about the playoffs and you're talking about specific schemes, then we're talking about. You know, Zara Williams might not be that good in, in in a series because he's just it's not the regular season versus the Warriors. They're just going to play their guys eight, eight, right. Right, eight deep. So I think that's, you know, a little bit different from what used to happen where, you know, people kind of played a little bit harder for 82 games. But I think you're kind of seeing that with Memphis a little bit. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm really curious how that series is going to go. And yeah. I'm very curious now about the Sun series um versus the pelicans so because book went down right and i don't think he's coming back in that series nope so um i still have the suns winning it but i think the blazers can i'm not the blazers i think the pelicans can push them um and possibly get out the series but i you know i'm still leaning the 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 suns but i just think that's going to be a close series now well, i know it's it's weird like that's that's not that thing's not a joke because they can just take away cp3 with with herb jones and just a trap they can just take him away and when that happens then then what um that's right. where devin booker comes in and he's awesome but and the crazy thing is 
in game two when D book got hurt, um, they were losing. Like D book had thirty some at halftime. They were losing that game. Um, not to say that they would have lost. The, the Suns probably win in five, right? If D book is playing, but still, right? Like, this this Suns. I think Pelicans are kind of like a, in a disguise. They're a pretty damn good team, right? In disguise, but yeah. I, I think I think if you're the Suns, I I wouldn't. I think if you're the Suns, I think they may have a tougher time beating the Pelicans than Memphis beating the Timberwolves. I think it's it's tough sledding with just they, they're not getting any shots at the rim because they don't have anyone that can get to the rim, and if their threes don't fall, that's it. So right. that's, that's and Draymond that's tweeted this and. I actually, I had even said it before him, but people were killing me. And, and he was just like, oh, well, with D-Book out, like, the the Pelicans have the two best players um, in the in the series. You know, no, no disrespect to – he didn't tweet it. He said it on his show, and mm-hmm. someone tweeted it. And, um, you know, he's like, no disrespect to Chris Paul. And I had said the same thing. And Ooh. people – because people know that I, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the short man. And so, you know, um, <laughs> people just wait, thought so, I was wait, so, so who are the two? Ingram and, and Ingram and, and, and CJ? Yeah. And you know wow. what? I mean, I'm assuming he was talking about CJ. That's who I was talking about. But here's the thing, right? The reason I say that is obviously, like, neither of these guys are better than Chris Paul for his career. But, like, aside from taking away Chris Paul, who's making all the, the decisions and who's the primary playmaker, right? They also need him to be like their main scorer to, or like one of them, right? And like, he cannot do that for you on a consistent basis. He's yet to play two good games in a row. It's like game one and then game three. And one of the games was sort of average. The last night he had four points, you know, like, at this stage, I know what I'm going to get from CJ. Even if he's a little inefficient, I know what I'm going to get from him. You're going to get his scoring production. He's an on-ball creator, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and BI can, like, they can just, you know, Chris Paul, you're relying on him to assist and get the other guys going. Yep. But, like, AN, he has to be set up. Cam Johnson wasn't hitting any threes last night. So they just, Mikel Bridges needs to be set up. Like, but they have two guys who can just, you know, someone said to me, now nah, I sound like ball don't stop, but it's like, they have two guys who can go get you buckets, you know? Yep. And like, yep. that can be the difference in a series. So when I say it's better, it's, it's, it's more that CJ is more reliable to me. Like I can count on him. I think for the most part to give me be a 20 point score throughout the series. I don't know that I can get that from Chris Paul. So when I say he's the better player, that's what I mean. I don't, I didn't hear Draymond's explanation, but you know, and even if he's not like fine. If um, Chris Paul is the best player, then they have the, the second and third best player left, right now. Yeah, or, yeah. or would you consider eight and better than either one of them? Well, I think I think, I mean, Jonas Valanciunas, as we watched last night, like we we see big man ball in, in in the postseason. Like a lot of it gets, you know, if you're not Embiid or Jokic, who who I think are the two best bigs, and then you've got Cat, who even he struggles a little bit, right? Like I think if you're not those guys and you're eight and like, how good are you as compared to Jonas Valanciunas, right? Like, it's kind of right. about the same level almost. And and so, uh, yeah, I'm with you. And then you talk about the rest of the players, like Cam Johnson, Cam, the campaign's been terrible. Um, Jay Crowder, like, those guys are just guys, right? Like, they're, they're, right. they're, they're just dudes out there versus – and they need kind of someone like Book. And then you've got this New Orleans team where, you know, I – Alvarado or Jones, you got these young kids where, yeah, they're not as good. Like, I'd, I'd probably rather have the Suns role players, but their upside is higher. So, end of the day, right, like, the the Pels probably win one more, and, and, and CP3 is just annoying as, as hell. He'll probably <laughs> pull it out. and say, Like, if I had to put money on it, but I, and you know what the other thing is? And, and people, like, go crazy when you say it's just CP3 is probably going to get hurt. Like, he's probably – like, that's just who he Dead. has been every Dead, single yeah. postseason. Like, he plays – he's just not – they feel like you're wishing for it, but you're not. You're just saying yeah. like it's gonna happen most likely. He's 36. Like he's just he's old. He's old for a basketball player. So even if they win this series, it's it's a tough stretch. But again, you look at the rest of the West. We've got Utah and, and Dallas coming up tonight. Like who knows where that's gonna go? We thought that was gonna be Dallas, right? Like it's yeah, it's a bloodbath in in the West, and and the Warriors are just sitting there, and 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 you're just sitting there, and just take care of business on Wednesday night, and and you're good. 
Yeah, and they could still, I know a lot of people were a little like disappointed because they were like, oh, they won't get that super long rest or they won't get a week off. But if the Grizzlies series go seven, they can still get close to a week off if they take care of business on Wednesday because, yep. you know, that series wouldn't start till next Tuesday probably. So, yep. um, and I think that's a good amount of rest because if they really would have ended it before, you're talking about actually over a week of rest maybe, like, eight nine days um and uh, that's good but it also may not be you know like i was I don't gonna know. say do you like <laughs> is, is someone hurt like okay is is are you telling me steph is like it looks like steph's okay i know they were still worried about his foot right when he came back but looks like he played 37 looked great yesterday so you know unless those seven days are going right. to get steph to 100 percent. like i think this is kind of who you got like jordan Poole is always kind of writhing on the floor in some pain but he's always fine right draymond draymond probably needs it the most i would say yeah, like draymond probably needs it. yeah so but still end of day like if you get four days which looks like if they win on wednesday they'll get a they'll minimum get at least three they'll get thursday <laughs> friday Saturday. they'll get three days right like they'll get minimum three days um, and, and, and if you uh, count this time off right now, because like they play Sunday, but they're getting these days before they play right. again. It's not like they're, Denver is not a, um, like they're not beating you up. Like, like, like you're not beating you up physically, uh, in these games, it's not the most physical basketball game. So I, I think they'll be fine. They also haven't played playoff games in two years. Like this team isn't the one that went to five straight finals. Right. So. Um, and then Clay's another guy you think about rest, right? Um, that that he's probably gonna need to need some rest with the two leg injuries. That's a guy where it's like, man, he played 31 minutes the other day. He probably could have played like 40, and you're just watching him. And right. Like, he came off Clay's injuries. Impressive. Like right? crazy. T- I mean, just to see how he's playing right now. Like I thought to even get to this Clay, we maybe wouldn't see it till next year. Um, the defense I know is a next year thing. Like to maybe get back to a higher level of a defensive player but i mean the way he's shooting again and just it's it's really incredible yeah no, i've never seen but it i was i was talk, i was thinking about this it's crazy that teams six seven eight nine years in still double steph and leave clay open it's just <laughs> still to this day it is just clay's open clay's open and that is not he's just not the guy you ever want to leave open he will shoot it every time and he will make it every single time it's especially in crunch time so and now we have Jordan Poole. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm wearing my pool party. There you go. Just so there you go. I, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I had to give a little love to Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, who didn't have his a good game. It was probably, his, yeah, definitely his worst game so far in the series. And maybe worst game in just a while, you know. Um, what were you seeing? Because I think... You know, it looked like Denver made an adjustment by putting like Aaron Gordon on him and that seemed to bother him somewhat. So what do you think? Do you think Kerr will make any adjustment for that? Or what do you, how do you think they'll handle that? Yeah, I, well, first off, I steps back in the starting lineup on Wednesday. I, some part of me feels like Jordan Poole is coming off the bench. Is he? Has that yeah, been announced? I, I, I no, been... no, but I would assume. I just, okay. I, have, I have no idea, but just from what you see with this team and what, what you hear from Steph. And I mean, obviously he's going to start. Right. And I think with Steve, he's just, I just, I don't think that Steve wants to start with the small lineup. I think he thinks if we can just put Looney on Jokic to start the first five minutes, we can get away with five minutes, which is like, well, Draymond picked up a foul in 30 seconds in, in the last game. So it's like, did that really do anything for you? But End of the day, I think Paul is coming off the bench again. So I think that's one adjustment. I think the other adjustment is really. They, you think yeah. he's really gonna make him come up? He like I disagree, like, but I, yeah. it's so ridiculous to me, like that he's so crazy about this. I, I just I I don't know why. Right? I mean, I do know why. We do know why. It's Steve. He'll always go with the vets, and you know, at the end of the day, I think with him, it's like okay, like we're not benching Wiggins, right? You you want him for defense. You also. You know, he's older. He He's not going. He just I think Wiggins doesn't care about being benched, but I just, just think that you actually really what, need him on the court. But that's the thing. You need Jordan, too. I, there you go. I mean, you play your best five is what I would go with. But again, I, look, I, I don't like I I, I I just I think that's what he's going to do. We, we don't know. But I think that's one adjustment that he's it's not even an adjustment. Just one thing he's going to do. I think the other adjustment is you've got to have pull on the floor with Steph or clay on at all times. Like that's the other thing. 
they played this lineup in the second quarter where the, it was just Steph and like me, like four. Yeah, Andy, so that like was four awful. of you. And like I think that's just not not acceptable. And I think that's a lineup where Jordan Poole has to be has to be in. Um, you just you just it's not okay to play those lineups. Like Andre looks cooked at least in that game. So that's the other adjustment. Play him next to Steph. Play him next to Clay where he can get more open looks and, and easier shots and and kind of make life easier for him. But he'll be fine. I, he'll be. With the, I don't think there's anybody more confident than Jordan on the Warriors. So I think we'll have a bounce back game. Yeah, I'm not that worried about Jordan. I um, I don't remember what I was gonna say. I lost my thought. But um, yeah, Kerr. You know, I saw I saw a tweet, and I wish I saved it. But like, it was talking about a lineup or like the minutes where like Steph and Dre weren't on the court, and it was kind of like why is there ever like, like, why is that a thing? You know, like we're neither one of them or out there. It's just some of the things he does or is like just mind boggling to me. Oh. I just don't get, but you know, yeah. like, like, we're like, not going like to talk that. about Kerr because yeah. <laughs> we're, we're two people who are probably looked at as like Kerr haters. And oh. so, <laughs> well, you know, and you I know, don't even think you're as bad as me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, to me, like the game that he the he coached on, what like Sunday wasn't that it wasn't that bad. It had a lot, very, a lot of Kerr things were with the lineups, and then you see the that that let's say this that last play call was one of the worst play calls I have yeah. ever seen ever seen. And I think you can make as many excuses about that play call as you want, but just under those circumstances, with the way this team operates and the way you have Steph Curry completely unacceptable no like i'm a twitter coach right so we're all twitter we're all twitter coaches and i think that in this scenario in this vacuum scenario of that play even steve himself agreed it's just, it's just yeah it terrible. like i honestly didn't have that much criticism for him honestly but that except the the ato was just like it was ridiculous oh my lord um i I like the Kaminga minutes. I've been like saying, why hasn't Kaminga been playing in this series? Only because I went back and I watched like the matchups with Denver and I looked to see like how those games went. And in the the one game they actually won, and I know some of the ones they didn't win, it was the baby dubs and there were like other mm -hmm. players missing, blah, blah, blah. But in the one game that they won, Kaminga like went off in that game, you know? And and he seemed to just do well, though, for the most part throughout the series. So I'm just like, why aren't you playing Kaminga? Like, I'm sure you guys went back and looked to see how he was. And I get it. I know he's just going to, like, go with the vet. But I just, I was actually really shocked that Kaminga didn't get minutes earlier in this series. And, you know, that he was just so hell-bent on going to belly. And I, there are people who, like, in my mentions every day, like, Belly's playing well. No, he's not. He played one good game. <laughs> he was competent in, an, in another. And there have really been a lot of like not great moments, but like they've just won in spite of it. You know, I yep. I just didn't think the the belly minutes were necessary. And I would have preferred that they go to Kaminga. So I mean, what did you think about his time on the court? Classic Steve. Just just Kaminga comes in, the team's down 15 points, and he's got a guard, Nikola Jokic. Just like throw this 19-year-old kid in the fire, right? Just and, and you do it in game four after you just haven't played him in like two weeks. Just right. My, good, my goodness. Other than that, though, I thought he looked good. Um, right, there was a little rust in the beginning, but once he like settled, yeah, he which was is good. like, can you can you blame the kid, right? It's like, can exactly. you you just expect him to come out to ball out? No, he came out, he looked a little nervous and a little scared, and then got a dunk in, and he was fine. Like he made the same mistakes he always does, which is he doesn't know the defensive schemes and he doesn't know where to go on offense. And you, literally the first play down the court, you can see Steph telling him who to guard on defense, and I was laughing. But you know what? It doesn't like the impact that he has is so great. The upside that he has is so great that when you have players, especially vets that are struggling so badly, and I think Steve actually did a good job of this in that game, is that we never saw Belly again. Yeah. Never saw Belly again after that first half. And I he'll think he probably told Andre a little earlier, to be honest. That's the one where it's I, like, I know I that know. it's Andre, know. but he yeah. was not. He was, that, he was bad. And, and and I think Steve, 
I actually like I like he threw shit at the wall. He was just like, let's try Andre at the five. I would have I would have tried Looney at the five instead. But it's like he tried to zone right a little bit. So he kind of threw Andre to the wolves there. But then Andre offensively was bad too, right? So um yeah, I'm I'm with you where you might as well try it out. Like, but I, I can see him not playing Kaminga again in game five just because I think I think with Steve, he's always going to go with the guys that he thinks and understands where to be defensively. And just like, even if their physical limitations allows them to struggle, which it will with belly um, that he's just going to, tr- and, and Looney, he's just going to trust that. And I think with game five, I think with game five, it's not a must win, but it, but, is. But it kind of is. Like, he it should kinda go nine. Is. like just no belly, just go nine, trust the nine guys. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I think he should do, you know, cause belly's really like a temp. 10th guy really yeah. Yeah. and I just he thought is. if there was going to be a 10th guy it was going to be Kaminga not him um yeah it was the March 10th game I went back and looked Kaminga 18 points on 7 of 12 shooting and you know where I thought he could have been helpful is really against like Denver's second unit right like I thought like he could exploit those as mismatches because like there's none of those guys have anything for him you know um oh wow well. but yeah we better win this game. And I don't want it to be a close game where I'm like down to the end, like, Oh my God, are we going to win? They better go in there and like blow them out. We're going to be at home yeah. and the crowd is going to be giving them energy pool needs to have a bounce back game. Like we just need to end these guys. It it feels like a blowout. It feels like a, you know, like a three, four point game going into maybe, maybe going into the late second. And then they kind of blow it open uh, uh, going into the half, kind of like the a remake of games one and two, right? Kind of just, they'll keep it close. They'll keep it close. And then we saw how Jokic was exhausted um, at the end of game four. He didn't come in the fourth quarter till like, I want to say till like seven minutes to go, which is crazy. I mean, he's the MVP. Um, of the league and and he's just not going to play the first half of the fourth quarter which you know the Warriors kind of lost that game in the first half of the fourth quarter where just they just they lost to Cousins uh, and that and that bench line of like what, what was going on there so but I, I, I think it this was team crazy that they didn't attack him though on the other end like fine he's gonna score and do that but why why are we not attacking him on the other end and exploiting that mismatch like it didn't make sense to me classic Steve I mean the, the quote Steve had after the game was like we we felt like we dribbled too much um and, and did and didn't like pass enough which to me I was like y'all didn't y'all should have dribbled more like <laughs> you know I just run a freaking pick and roll like this this game is over now you know I understand the, the way he goes about it I mean you, you know part of you know we talked about KD earlier like part of why KD left is is he didn't like playing in Steve's offense right like he just right. didn't he just didn't want to do these things that Steve wanted to do and he always felt like Steve was too stubborn which Steve is um, there has to be a balance, and I always think that that Steve gets there. I mean, we saw them run pick and roll only in the fourth, in the late fourth quarter with Steph, but you got to get there earlier, right? There, there's just there's just no reason for this team not to come out and blitz them just with 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 ISOs like just <laughs> with pick and rolls. Because why why are we passing around around the horn with this? This Denver team is not good defensively, so. Right. We'll see. They should put him away in game five. It would be massively disappointing if this thing goes to six. Just, just no reason for it to. So I'm curious, who would you prefer to see in the second round? Because I really, before the playoffs started, I really wanted Memphis because they just talk so much. But like now I'm like, I feel like Memphis is being exposed a little bit. Um, and if they were to lose to, to the wolves, they're going to get humbled anyway, but like, if we can get the wolves, then we'd have home court in that series. So now I'm almost leaning that I want the wolves because we'd actually have home court in that matchup. Um, but do you feel like one of those are harder matchups for us just based on the personnel? I think Memphis is a harder matchup. I think easily, I, I think with, with Minnesota, I think it's pretty easy to beat Minnesota. I think Delos Delos a sieve defensively. I think you can lock him down pretty easily. I think Anthony Edwards is, is he's damn near hobbling on that knee right now, but I think he's still too too kind of like I think he still doesn't know, especially in these playoff games, how to win. And I think I think Cat is just someone. I mean, he's just someone Draymond's gonna own. Like it's just we've seen it before. We'll see it this time, right? Um, and Jokic is Jokic and Draymond are pretty much two two and two right now, right? Like Jokic just has bit has two great games, and and then Draymond's outplayed him in two games. So I think it's gonna be a different story with Cat. Cat's not even in Jokic's level. 
Um, right. So I think that's the matchup that you want. Draymond first. They're a Pat low Fett. IQ team too. They are. Like, they are. Just yeah. the shot selection and oh their coach. Their coach may have done something worse than any coach I've ever seen. I mean, just the oh, yeah. letting the run go without calling the timeout. So I mean, I would think he wouldn't do that again. But like. I just, I don't know. I would like them. So I would, I think I would like them to beat, um, mostly I want it because of home court, but I think I would like them to beat Memphis. Yeah. I mean, that's Minnesota series, a five game series. Memphis. Yeah. I mean, Memphis is, I thought it would be a tough series going in. I kept thinking that for the last month of regular seasons. And the more I thought about the more I watched the more I was like, yeah, Memphis is not, they're not, they're not. I mean, it's, I still think like that's a six game series. Like I think the Warriors win that in six games, Um, but it's not this like, I, at first, I kind of was like, oh, they're kind of similar to how OKC was in 2016. Like, I might run you over and this and that. But I'm just like, no, no. OKC at KD. Like, they, yeah. and Russ was good for some of that series. And, and like, that was MVP level Russ. Like, you know, we're talking about right. the Russ that we're seeing today, right? So, um, and that that level of Russ, we could say, is like just as good as, as John Morant right now. And that Russ was good. So, I don't think... Like, I, I probably picked that, like, Warriors in six against Memphis, and I had to pick Warriors in five against Minnesota. Like, that that seems like a very easy, like, two wins at home, go to Minnesota, they win one because they can't miss from three, and they got this crazy crowd, then you steal one, and then you win one at home. Like, kind of like how it is with Denver. Like, right. with Minnesota, it kind of feels like – and and for the Warriors, like, that's that's best-case scenario right now for this team who's kind yeah. of just – they're the Warriors are in a perfect place to win a championship this season right now. I would pick Grizzlies in six, too, if we face them. And I'd only pick them in six, not, again, because of the matchup, but because of home court. Because I think, I think like, even if they steal one of those first two, like, on the road, and then you come home and let's say you win your two at home, I think it would still go be hard to go into a game five in Memphis and – and get another one where they're like fighting for their lives and, and yeah. stuff like that. So I think they would just come back home for six, but like, if that was a, a home court series for the warriors, I would actually probably pick us to win that in five too. Yeah. Um, so that's what, that's what changes it for me. S- starting on the road is, is, uh, is interesting. Yeah. Um, when was the last time the Warriors started a series on the road? I, I can't do, have they ever, the Did Rockets, they start the- I think. Oh what yeah, year was right. That? Wow, that's 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 great memory. Uh, yeah, they did. That was well, actually, that was the year. That was the the second championship with Kevin Durant, yeah. so the third overall. You're right. You're right. And they won Game One, I believe. I don't even remember the order. I just know that we didn't have home court. In that yeah, period. yeah. Well, the Warriors were down three two. I remember, and they were down by like eighteen at home, Game Six, and Clay brought them back. Uh, wow, good times. Um, uh, yeah, that would be the last one because I think. Starting on the road is pretty cool for the Warriors because you just know they'll win one. Like, yeah. they'll, they'll just win one. And all of a sudden, they've got home court advantage. Like, I, I think that's – like, there's just – Memphis is not beating them twice in a row. Like, that's just that's just not happening. Now you got to go home and win your two, right? But right. I think that's that's a cool scenario for, for the Warriors to go in on the road and see if they can beat Memphis. But, again, <laughs> Memphis got to take care of business, man. They're in a dog fight. Uh, and are. it's and it's not and it's not like they're beating the shit out of Minnesota. Like they no. they've only done it one time, just in one game they've beaten them. And yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about the East really quickly because th- those series seem to be a little bit more decided. Well, one is actually decided. Um, I think the Bucks are going to take care of business. I think the Heat are going to take care of business. So yep. the Sixers Raptors are interesting. I mean, I think the Sixers will still win, but Embiid is banged up and. You know, so I don't I don't know what they're going to be like in a second round series, but the Celtics are looking, you know, dangerous. And I mean, I think for most of the season, everybody had the Bucks probably coming out the East. Sometimes you hear the heat. People didn't know what was going on with the Nets, but now the Nets are gone. But I mean, the Celtics have just emerged and um, I would be really interested in a Warrior Celtics finals. I, I would like that. <laughs> that more, than, would... more than I would like a Bucks finals, to be honest. Yeah, you think you think because is is it because you think the Bucks are a tougher matchup, or you think? No, I mean, I actually, I, I don't, I don't think. First of all, I don't think the Bucks have been as dominant this season, like as they normally have, and people have all their different theories and reasons behind it, but they just haven't been as dominant as a team to me. Um, 
But I mean, obviously, you know, you'd have Giannis and like you'd have that level of player on the court. But there's just something to me about teams that can play defense the way that Brooklyn plays defense. And I think that would actually make them a harder matchup. Um, And Jason Tatum is like really putting himself into a conversation to say like, we may have to recognize him as a top 10 guy now. And so, I mean, he's definitely like up there in terms of who he is as a player. Um, But I just think their defense and because I just, I just think it would be a fun matchup. Our games versus the Celtics are always great. Like those are always good games. They're always entertaining. Um, I just think it would be a fun series. I think it would be entertaining. I think it would get like, great ratings you know those are all the things I'm thinking about not necessarily but I I do think they would be a tough matchup I actually would probably if we were playing a team I'd actually prefer in terms of like the team I think is easier I actually think it's the Bucks wow. just because, because I don't I don't I don't trust Middleton and 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 Drew like that like like I know what Giannis did was so impressive last year especially on a hyper extended knee but it was wow. first the Suns it was first yeah. the Suns and um I just Middleton and Drew they're they're very good they don't move me though but like yeah. and the Celtics they have some offensive issues so yeah. they do but their defense yeah is so yeah real it is so real and I'm just like that's gonna be a tough defense so like I actually think they're the harder matchup but um I would just like it I think it would just be a more fun series if it was yeah I I I I see that I, I I see the sense behind that and I think that it's a close call um it's crazy because they're playing each other. <laughs> they're going to be, we're going to find out. And it, it's a little unlucky that the Bucks don't have Chris Middleton, but I would like to see, uh, you know, this Boston defense has been incredible, but I would like to see them. They gone up against Katie and Kyrie and they effectively locked them down, except, you know, Ky- Katie went off tonight, but I would like to see how they do against, against Giannis. Giannis is a different animal. I think with KD, he's a very skilled finesse kind of, especially now that he's older. Just kind of like I'm gonna get to my jump shot, and Giannis is like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna go right through you. Like that's his, that's his mentality, and I think that's a problem. <laughs> I think that's a that's a problem. We'll find we'll find out, right? It's a lot of Grayson Allen uh, happening right now, and and we'll see. Um, so I, I think the tougher matchup for me is 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 still Giannis, but I also think like they're about to play each other. They're about to kill each other for a series, and then you've got Miami. That's going to go up against this Philly series. Like Toronto's about to win two in a row. They're going back to Toronto and Wait, MB- is, are they about to win? I haven't yeah, been watching they, the they, game. Yeah, they're up they by blowout. Four. It's it's over. They won by fifteen. So Toronto wins by fifteen. Now they're going back to Toronto for Game Six. Harden looks like he's cooked. Embiid has that hand injury. Shit. Right. So it's like I did not realize that. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, without it's like, Fred. Without Fred. Yep. Yep. Oh. So it's interesting. I think the Heat have a pretty easy, you know, I can't say easy, it's a postseason, but they have an easier path, right? And so um it's it's interesting. The the East has gotten gotten a, uh, because of that. So uh we'll we'll see. Uh I think for me, I think I want to see Boston's defense tested a different way. Um, because if it is Boston Warriors, I think you are you will be seeing the number one offense versus the number one defense, which is pretty cool. Right. I mean, Giannis is not going to just be like, he's going to create more issues for them because he's not like Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant actually makes it easy for you, easier for you to take him away by the style he plays. Right. And just like isolation and, you know, he just doesn't, he doesn't pose the same issues when you're trying to guard him. Um, But I just think that, like, to me, I will see. I don't know what the, the Celtics game plan is going to be, but I think especially Middleton could maybe come back during that series because I don't know if it's if they've said if his if his sprain is a grade one or grade two. I haven't heard anything on the grading. I just know he's going to be reevaluated in two weeks. Mm-hmm. So from whenever it happened. So it's possible he could maybe come back midway in that series or something. But 
I just think like they're probably going to test the theory of like what happens if you take away Giannis's guys and like can he beat you because they can't okay. guard the other guys you okay. know um and then you know you have like Williams is back so you kind of have like Williams throw on him and Al Horford's there and you have like some different people and that you can throw at him and and, and see you know you're not going to stop him he's Giannis that that might be, I mean, just defensively, they might be the only team that can guard the Warriors left in the postseason. Boston. Like just just thinking about it. They have they have the wings, they have Marcus Smart. They, I, if you were to pick one team, yeah, that that's probably the team. Um, uh, because you're looking at the rest rest of the league. I I don't see how any team guards a three guard lineup. It's just not it's just right. Sim- simply not possible. Um Right. So it'll be interesting. Um, Okay. The last thing I wanted to talk about was um, MIP because it came out today that Ja won most improved player and lots of Warriors fans were upset because Jordan Poole wasn't even a finalist. And I actually didn't think Jordan would win um, because I kind of feel like you got to be in that conversation from the beginning of the season. And I just feel like the way he was yo-yoed around this year and, you know, like, started coming off the bench his minutes sometimes lee was getting minutes over him just you know it wasn't really to like when steph went out really but like the last month plus that like he kind of had like a consistent you know role so i didn't think that he would win but i did think that he would be a finalist and i was sort of surprised not to see him in the top three were you surprised by that at all and like what do you think about ja winning it the award is kind of meaningless. The two, like, that's my first thought. It's just kind of like, what is most improved? Like, what is, do we ever remember who's most improved, right? So it's kind of weird. I'd be curious to see what Jordan Poole thinks about it. Like, does Jordan Poole care? Like, part of me feels like he doesn't give a shit, but I don't know, right? Like, he's young. He's looking for a contract extension. He might care. Um, now, for, for the award itself, yeah, I think it's kind of bullshit. Like, a job, like, what do we do? What do we do? John Morant was the freaking second overall pick. He's been incredible the moment he walked into the NBA. We knew he was going to be good. Maybe we didn't think he was going to be this good, but it's like, dude's good. Like, he's always going to get better. That's how good basketball players are, right? When you draft a number two player, you don't just draft him and he's going to become the same person three years in. He's going to become better like John Morant. So, like, what are we – like, should KD win it? Should, should Steph have won it? Like, what are we talking about? So, yeah, I'm, I'm – like, I think that's bullshit in itself. Um, the Jordan Poole piece, I think part of it is like, <laughs> you'll enjoy this. I think part of it is just like Steve just did play him enough. Like that's just right. simply yeah. what happened. And I think like that actually works to his case. But you know how it goes like with, with someone like that. It's like he has to play a lot of minutes and he has to score a lot of points. And it didn't happen until the last month and a half, two months of the season that he got those minutes, right? To start the season, he was great. Tailed off because Clay came back and it was kind of in a downtail spell. And partly part of that was him, I, I think, was Poole, where he was just mad that he got benched. Um, and I think he's going to handle it better, right? I think especially moving forward. So um, it's 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 weird. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. He's definitely the most improved player by far, just off the fact that he was the worst basketball player as a, as a rookie. He was in the freaking G League last year. Um, but on the, on the other hand, I think it's like, you know, if you're Jordan Poole, like, I think he can be happy because he knows uh, he's he's gonna get twenty five million plus. <laughs> right. He's gonna get he's gonna get paid out, and if it's not the Warriors, you think the Warriors are gonna max him? They're not gonna let him go. They're not gonna do what the OKC did with James Harden, right? No, no. I mean, you can even compare it to like the Reggie Jackson thing is what OKC did, right? Too. But you're actually that's a better comparison now, right? Like Jordan Poole was kind of the the Reggie Jackson comparison. Before the season. now, it's like shit. I mean, he might be James Harden. They'll pay him. I think it'll be at the expense of Andrew Wiggins, um, because I think it'll be like Wiggins is just super expensive, and if they can re-sign him for a little bit, they might. But I think like that's like that's I mean Moody and Kaminga, like those are the guys that, like if I were if I owned a team, which I never will. Like I would be if I didn't want to pay the luxury tax, I would just be like, well, I could either get Wiggins, give Wiggins twenty mil and play luxury tax, or like, there's a reason why they drafted Kaminga and Moody, right? Like, so I think they'll they'll resign Paul and then they'll get those guys. But I don't, you know, these guys they love Wiggins, like this, they love them. They they Do love you think they that would they trade him next year or yeah, try to question. get him to commit to like. I mean, is it like a short deal for like a lot of money, or would it be like trying to take a discounted? Yeah, like, that's, I, like and I don't Wiggins, know how all that stuff works with the tax, but 
because I brought this up recently in like a spaces and like apparently like people were really upset that I was even suggesting, you know, and I and I wasn't saying like, I think you've seen my tweets. I'm an yeah. Andrew Wiggins stan. I love yeah. him. Um, I just was just like, I just don't know if they're gonna just based on what they've said in terms of like what they want to pay. I don't I don't know if they're going to want to pay for five max contract guys, especially for a guy who's your fourth option, who's basically now when pool is getting, you know, his usage has gone up. He's maybe now a 12 to 15 point guy a night versus like a 15 to 18 point guy. And you do need his defense. So like, I'm not like discrediting that, but I just, I don't know if they're going to want to do it. Like you said, like when they have Kaminga there and if you do resign Andrew, it's also just a natural conflict with stunting like Kaminga's growth right his That's development so i was just speaking about that but people were like very upset with me like i was suggesting we trade wiggins and i uh, i mean like in theory in <laughs> the in theory kaminga is a better fit at the closing lineup at the four because you get a rim pressure guy that's consistently to the rim finishing um he's not a he's not a better shooter uh and he's also not a better perimeter defender but he's a guy that theoretically can get rebounds and help help Draymond protect the rim a little bit. And you would think that maybe Jordan Poole gets better defensively and Clay can kind of get back to that. So, like, I think that's what they think. But at the same time, it's going to be very hard to just let Wiggins walk away for nothing. And I think that's that's the issue because they've kind of – they traded for him. They helped him rehab his image into this, you know, very, very strong role player. And – um I, 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 I don't, it's a very interesting situation. I, I don't actually know what, I just think that's what they're going to do. I have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah, um, I don't either. I have it's, no idea. But I think these are the questions like in the background. My, yeah. It's my guess. We're a ways away. We're a ways yeah. away. They may, and, look, if, if they have a championship under their belt, like they might just sign all of them. Like I just, right. they might just sign all of them. Like, and I would love that. I would, yeah. I would love yeah. them to just go all in because they're billionaires. Right. And like, this yeah. is honestly, not something that they can't afford. It's yeah. just like an arbitrary threshold that they've set that they don't want to pay more than. Yeah. So it's like they can um, afford it. Elon Musk just paid forty billion dollars for the app that was uh, exactly. So let the fine. record reflect that Natalie wants to keep Andrew Wiggins. I yeah. love Wigs. I'm the one who begged Warriors World for Wiggins apparel, <laughs> and that finally she gave it to me. Like that is I, like I am a Wiggins stan. Um, Andy, thank you, thank you so much for coming on. Are we winning the chip this year? I think I think the Warriors are. I I think that's that's. I, I had that feeling a little bit, kind of going into it. But I, you're just watching the postseason. You're watching these teams. You're watching these teams, and I think that their biggest challenge might be coming out of the East, and we don't even know who's coming out of the East. Like right. that. That's like it, you go to the finals, and anything is possible. Anything can happen. I think the Warriors. I think they're winning one, and I think Steph gets his fourth. Man, he is on. He is, he is on a finals a, MVP this year. Jordan Poole's going to get the final. <laughs> That'd be funny, right? If Jordan Everyone is it. saying this, and it's annoying me. It's Not because I funny. don't love Jordan, but like I just need to. No, not... he'll, he'll he'll get one where it's like he, people know he got snubbed. Like he got snubbed the first year they won a championship, and I think people are starting to understand that hey those two seasons that they won with KD yeah KD was pretty freaking great uh, I mean did you hear Charles clear. Barkley's comment yeah yeah, yeah right why, like, did he, why didn't he go to step further though and just say Steph was the best player like he like really like it it pains him Shaq should have done it Shaq should have done it because Shaq loves Kurtz Shaq loves Steph he should have done it I I just think people even if Steph kind of has like a quote unquote like whatever NBA finals like I think that he's gonna get one if they win it because I think it's at that point of career, it's like everybody knows, like, hey, the success of this team, it's nobody else but Steph Curry. Like, right. Draymond's awesome. Clay's awesome. Jordan Poole's going to be awesome. But that is the guy. I actually and, uh, think he's going to go for it. I, I, I would have never thought that about him. And this is going to sound like a really silly thing. And then I promise, like, I'm going to rap. But when I saw him go for the all-star MVP, that's when I was like, and it's not the same gravity or weight, but it's also that... Steph understands that like all of the guys actually have one of those. Like Kobe has one, Katie has one, 
LeBron has one, like Jordan has, like they all have them, like all of the great of the greats they do, even though it's like not an award we really care about, but it's just like a resume checker, you know? And so I just feel like, and I never thought I would see Steph like go for an award. And I was just like, I think he knows, he knows he just has to get the finals MVP shit off of his back. And I think he's going to go for it. I do. I really do. So I think he's going to win it finally, but it's just like, everyone's like, oh, it's got to be full. It's got to be full. And I'm just like, I wish y'all would stop putting that energy into the universe. And I love pool, but I just, I'm so tired of people talking about this thing with Steph. It just needs to end. Yeah. I mean, he's getting to the age where he understands like what he still needs in the cupboard. Um, and uh, I mean, if he feels like finals MVP is, is what he needs, it's great. I, I personally, like to me, it's like, no one cared we, about we know MVPs. we know yeah we know we know what steph is i think but you know end of the day it's it's you know i think steph knows I mean, we saw him gun for it in 2018 right yes he, right yeah, he, he was going yeah. for it in 2017 to be honest like he's always I mean, he was cool. i mean he's he was the best we've ever seen in 2017 yeah. i mean my god i mean that that yeah. guy was he was anyway he just I, always I think has I, that I, one bad game and so he has to like not do that his bad games are, are uglier than other people's bad games, yeah. I, I think, with, with Steph. But, yeah, you know, I think as long as they – look, if they win a fourth championship, I could – I you know, Trey Mon could win Listen, the finals. MVP. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, fuck Four it. Four championships? Know. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that'll be – that's where we're going to live. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Andy, thank you so much for coming on. I, you know, normally I plug my guests. You don't need any plugging. You're, like, one of the most popular people, but – you guys check out Andy, follow him. I can't believe there's anyone who would be listening to my show who doesn't already follow you. Um, and Light Years Pod, check them out. They're one of the main voices of like Warriors Twitter, like coverage of the Warriors. They have on great guests. So check them out. And um, I'll be seeing you on the TL, Andy. And Hell yeah. go Dubs. We're winning it this year. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Take care.